Our guest has traveled to the corners of the world in pursuit of a perfect cup of tea. He buys loose leaf tea from places such as India, China and Japan, blends them for sale in grocery stores and other outlets in Canada and the States. Joining us now for a look at the growing market for loose tea, we're joined by Frank Weber. He's president of Toronto-based Tea Squared. Pleasure to meet you. So you, you sell wholesale, a whole bunch of outlets, something like 2,000 outlets for your products. Yeah, we're, we've been fortunate to um, really capture the market rapidly, and thanks to the growing popularity <coughs> in quality loose-leaf teas, uh, we're represented in about 2,000 outlets now in Canada and uh, in some of the United States as well. Now, you do a wide range of products, including iced tea, herbal teas, but, but let's focus in just on regular loose-leaf tea, the quality caffeinated tea here. Because Correct. I, yeah. I think that's the main driver right now for you guys. It is the main driver, and it's really the bulk of our business, and we've dabbled a little bit in iced teas, and they're growing very strongly as well. But for the most part, we produce... Uh, high quality loose leaf teas, um, scented green teas, scented black teas, a lot of herbal teas. There are some different benefits in particular herbal teas as well. So that's really the core of our business. So tell us about the tea business. I mean, coffee gets most of the publicity, but uh, tea, you're at pains to say, it's not just grandma's drink anymore. Uh, not at all. Tea has changed so rapidly in the last 15 years or so. We've seen an influx in, in tea stores, specialty tea boutiques in Canada. And Canada in particular has done a very good job in embracing that. Uh, uh, due to, I think, our diversity as well and our willingness to explore with different flavors. So tea, in particular, when I refer to tea, I'm talking about a specialty loose-leaf tea, high-grade loose-leaf tea is always of a better quality than what you find in your commercial tea bag. That is the segment that has really been growing over the last 10 years in double digits. So you go all over the world. Uh, what's the process, what's the tea market like? I mean, it's obviously very ancient, but what's it like buying tea around the world? Um, it, it's, it's a pleasure to me. I mean, I'm a tea fanatic, and um, I very much much enjoy also I have a hospitality background I used to be chef so I enjoy kind of creating different flavors as well um, obviously you travel to the locations um, to just monitor where the tea comes from and to 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 foster relationships with, with certain growers or suppliers as well uh, we do live in a, in, a, in a world that is so connected these days if we need a sample of something in particular we can have it on our desk in three days and we can evaluate it from here as well so Thanks to that, we're, we're really able to um, to be very quick in, in, in the results. That so we does, does the industry put the bad, the worst tea into the tea bags and keep the good stuff for loose leaf? Absolutely. <laughs> it's always been like that. You will never find a top, top quality tea in a tea bag. There are good teas in tea bag, don't get me wrong. We also produce tea bags. The pyramid tea bags in particular are generally associated with a higher quality leaf. They can take a larger leaf and that's where you find the quality in tea. It's uh, the young shoots that we harvest and they are unbroken so you see actually the full leaf tea. So yeah. Now, um, I like the strong British Isles type tea. Oh, that comes course. generally <laughs> from Assam in India, doesn't Assam it? Assam is a wonderful region uh, uh, on both sides of the Brahmaputra River Valley that, that produces a really strong full-bodied malty cup of tea which we use for some blends like our chais so Assams are wonderful tea on their own because of that maltiness but they can also take milk very well and sugar because when you put milk and sugar into a um, into a tea that is not quite as full-bodied uh, it kind of masks some of the flavors mm -hmm. like Darjeeling's or green teas for example wouldn't take milk that well what's the big growth area now is it green tea white tea black tea Green tea, scented green teas have been on the up for the last, I would say, 10 years or so. Uh, we see, I see the trend going also into matcha, which is a particular stone ground green tea from Japan. That they use in the tea ceremony. Correct, right. yes. And, and now because of the health benefits, matcha has slightly more health benefits than any other teas. Um, we see it being used in all kinds of other applications, from cosmetics to um, to shakes and, and you know power shakes, fruits, uh, foods, granola bars, to chocolates everywhere. We just uh, we're coming out with a new line of matcha. A related um, uh, latte mixes uh, in the next month as well. The thing with green tea is though sometimes you only want to brew it for about 30 seconds if Absolutely, it's very high quality. For sure. Yeah, tea, tea is, is, I wouldn't say finicky, tea is still, I mean it's the most widely consumed beverage on the planet next to water, the most financially accessible beverage next to water. T really good tea is still cheap, you know, even if you're buying good quality loose leaf tea. So um, it, it is very, it's very accessible and not that hard to make. I mean, even a loose leaf tea, if you have the, the paper filter or some of a brewing basket, you just throw it in there, steep it for the correct amount of time, you know, give or take a few seconds, doesn't really matter all that much. And um, so t uh, tell us, is there some misconceptions about tea? Clear those up for us, if you would. 
Um, that misconception is caffeine level is one of the misconceptions for sure. People um, are unsure whether tea or coffee has more caffeine. And the, uh, the answer I always say is, is you're both correct because a pound of tea contains more caffeine than a, a pound of coffee, but it also yields you much more than, um, mm -hmm. than, than coffee does. So what ends up in your cup with a, a black tea or green tea is somewhere between half to a third of what you would find in a cup of coffee. It also reacts different in your body. Um, tea contains L-theane. It stimulates the brain waves. It, it makes you alert, but you don't get the jitters like from coffee, like you would from coffee. So it's a, it's a mental stimulation, clarity, but a, a calm alertness. And uh, foreign exchange, uh, the weaker Canadian dollar, I know it's come back, but that must have hurt your economics. Yeah, so those are some of our challenges. I think that um, the, the currency, certainly, I mean, we've seen the Canadian dollar tumble over the last couple of years, and, and we do feel that. And um, that is not something that's easily absorbed. Um, I think other challenges would be just procurement times. Uh, everything we do, it takes a long time to get to us. So if we if we decide on, on a certain type of tea or blend or uh, whatever that may be, we have to figure out, we have to consider about two months for, for us to actually have it in our warehouses. So so those are, I would say, some of the challenges. But the currency fluctuations certainly didn't help. Did you know tea used to be currency? Is that right? Valuable tea in China, I'm guessing? Tea, tea was traded like, um, if you had tea, you had wealth. Back on the Silk Road days, and tea was a commodity that was extremely valuable. It still is. I mean, um, some teas are traded like fine wine in China. They can fetch thousands of dollars an ounce. Um, so tea used to be compressed into coins that you could break and, and trade that way. Um, also for transportation, they'd use it in bricks. Still, still, some of that's still done with certain teas, like puer teas. And, uh, so it's fascinating. Fascinating stuff. Uh, Frank, thank you very much. My pleasure. Frank Weber, he's